Hey folks, James Downs with Downs Family Bullies. Um, day three of our lunchtime catfish challenge has gone awry. Like I said, I'd never fished there before, and um, you know, you don't know till you throw. So I gave it a shot, and uh, there was a whole lot of something down there. Threw all three poles out, and I noticed within just a minute or two, after I looked at my third pole, the, the lines were looking funny. Went to reel them in, every last one of them was snagged up. So, uh, I've been here five minutes, and I already lost $15 worth of tackle. So, I guess we're just gonna spend today's lunch break tying lines. Also, I'm out of no roll sinkers. So for today's purpose, I'm gonna use just a little old chunk it out there bait sinker. I think this is the two ounce. On our main line here, I'm still working through this trilene. It's a 30 pound big game trilene line. And um what I'm doing is setting up Carolina rig. Got my weight, got my bead. And then the next thing I'm gonna go with is I like to use snap swivels because we do a bunch of different kind of fishing. I'll use this same setup and we'll go down to uh, Grenada Lake and uh, we'll go bait fishing. And what I do is I just snap my bait hook on there that's already already got the line on it and everything and i either use a much longer leader line i'll take about six foot of um this 10 pound line and put on there with a smaller hook and i'll use this same reel same same line everything for for bait fishing but um anyway what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie us palomar knot if i can get some yonder we go we got some length now all right so here's what we're gonna do I've seen a lot of people kink that line like it right there and try to push it through the hole. I don't recommend doing that. It causes a kink and it automatically causes a weak spot in your line. What you want to do is run your line through just like it and then pull you some length through and then you're going to turn around and run it right back through the eye. Just like that. Just like it. Make sure nothing's rolled over, everything's even, nothing's binding, nothing. But see, this stays like that. That way you don't get that heavy kink in your line. And then what you do is you're going to take this little end here, and really, it's the same as, let me get this around here for whence you can see it. Here we go. All right. Now, we got that. Now we're going to make a little knot. And we're going to pull that back through just like that now we're going to feed this through that loop just like that and then pull and uh if i had a cup of water i'd use water but i don't so we're going to lube it up that way we don't burn the line make sure nothing's crossed and what i do is i pull my tag in and then I pull my main line, then pull my tag in, pull my line, make sure everything looks good. Now what you got there is that line is actually going through there two times. Now there's some knots that you have to tie on there. Like when you're using the circle hooks, you know, there's a certain way you snail that hook. That way it increases your catch ratio. But um, this is one of the strongest knots there is. They've done tests on it, and as far as just strength in knots, it's hard to beat that right there. Hard to beat it. These are the same setup, same line, I think same pole. I went fishing this weekend, and um, I caught me a, um, a Delta stump at the bottom of the Quiver River. Now this setup, what I'm using here is a 30-pound uh, line, 
That's a uh, 30 pound big game tri lane, I think is what it is. I got my little snap swivel, and then I've got my 60 pound whisker seeker line, and then my number six, I think it's a uh, triple threat hook from whisker seeker that they make. That was the hook, and I pulled that stump up out of the mud onto the bank. Nothing ever broke. So the knots work. You don't have to have a 100 pound test line to get a 100 pound fish in. You just don't. You know, if you can drag a tree stump out of the ground, you're doing pretty good. But I'm gonna go ahead and snap that. That way everything's locked in place. Just like that. And I'm gonna tie another, if I can get my line here. This is my whisker seeker line. I'm gonna go ahead and tie another Palmar knot on here. And you run it through. Now normally this ain't the line, this, this ain't the knot I'm gonna use on this, but just for demonstration purposes. This does work. I'm gonna pull that through there, and then I'm gonna pull it right back through. Just to kind of show how it's done. Just like that. That's what you're looking at right there. Now you're gonna make you a little knot. Just like that. You. Tying an old timey knot. Just plain old knot. And then you're gonna pull that line, the tag in line and your extra line back through. And you're gonna make your little pull. When you start feeling it getting tight, that's what you're looking for, that tightness. That's when you feel something's fixing to give, then you wanna wet it. You wet it, and then you wanna pull your tag in line, if I can get them separated here. Pull your tag in line, and then pull your main line, and then pull your tag in line. There you go. That joker is locked on there. Guaranteed to pull a stump up out the ground. I know that. We go on ahead and cut, cut the tag end off. Yeah. Once I realized what I had, I said, you know what? I'm gonna test these knots out and just test this line out because I'm trying to get a little better gear, a little better, a little better setup because we're doing some more and more fishing in the Mississippi River, and I don't want to catch what I'm looking for and not be able to drag it in. Anyway, there you go. That's what we're looking for. Simple and easy. Now the next knot we're gonna tie, it's called a snail knot. There's your number six. Whisker seeker, triple thread hook. Highly recommend it. But if you see the island, see how that's kicked back? So what we do is, we come through the front. See, there's your J. Come through your hook, give yourself a little leader line, just a little something to work with, and then you're gonna bend it and bend it back. And what you got right here is the line through there, and then you got your tag in. So what I do is I pinch it right there. So I've got just the loop. That's all I'm working with is the loop. I make sure that loop, ooh, that weight's pulling it. It's about right there. Make sure ain't nothing kinked up or anything. And I just start, whoop, you gotta hold it. Come on, Jane. It's hard to do and show y'all what I'm doing here. There we go. All right, here we go. That's two, three. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm making the loop around it and I'm coming back towards the hook. I'm trying to line these up. That way nothing's over crossing each other. And uh, a lot of people do it five, six times. I try to do it about seven times. And just line it up. Now, what I do is, see that loop right there? I'm gonna put the tag in through the loop and pull it. And I'm gonna pull here and pull here. Until I feel a resistance and then I'm gonna wet it. Yep right there and then we're gonna pull that line and I'll stick my finger in there pull that I got a tool for that I'm gonna do a video on that one day 
probably be a short because it don't take just a second to make it. It's a pretty simple little old thing, but it does real good. But see there? Coming through the front, just like that. You want to take your knife and cut off up to about an eighth of an inch. So we're looking like that. You got a little bit, but not much. Now, at this point, what we do when we're looking for bait fish, I got a little bitty reels that are, we put probably five pound line on that we go brim fishing with. Now, if you leave, I snail all those hooks, but it's because I fish with two hooks at a time. What I do is with that tag line, I make it really long, probably about two foot long. And once I get that first snail on, then I snail the second hook about 12 inches behind that. So I'll have a hook here and probably a hook over about right here. And that way we're running two hooks on our bait. Because when I'm bait fishing, it ain't pretty. I catch as much as I can, quick as I can, because most of the time where we go bait fishing now, there's a lot of people standing around out there to spill away. And they'll chunk a bait out. They'll leave that bait sitting there for an hour, hour and a half. And they looking at us like we're crazy. We're kind of in their way. But we harvesting fish is what we do. doing. We go in there and what we do is we use drum. I know a lot of people like to talk about skipjack and use skipjack. There's a lot of fellas that fish on the Tennessee River. It's got a lot of videos out. And um, that's fine. They use skipjack on the Tennessee River. And there is very apparent they catch some really big fish on it. But we use drum. It is readily available. It's considered a trash fish. I can catch them as big or as little as I want to and I can take them home and we take them and make cut bait out of them. Or use this same setup and I'll use that little bit of light, that leader line and I'll put another hook behind it and we'll take an entire skip jacket put on there and I'll run two, I mean a drum on there. I'm thinking about the folks in Tennessee. But I'll run one line through the nose and then one line about halfway up the fish and um, it's actually running two two hooks. And then when we do that, we're running um, 10 all hooks. Not these, these are number sixes. This is what we use when we're fishing the Sunflower River and stuff, because they're really, there's some big fish in there, you know, big when you consider big for the area. There's there's some big fish in there, but you ain't finna catch no 100 pounder out of there. So we just use six alts in there and it's, it's always done just fine. It's more than heavy enough. You just gotta watch your tip on it, make sure it's sharp. That's it. Make sure you get a good set. But uh, six hawks always been pretty good. Quiver River, we fish in the Quiver River a whole lot too. Um, any of our lakes around here, that number six is plenty big enough. But when you go to the Mississippi River, we swap everything over to a little bit heavier leader. We're gonna fish with about an 80 to 100 pound leader line out there in the Mississippi River, and then we go to 10 all hooks. And uh, that seems to seems to pull in whatever we need without any bailing. But anyway. Let me pull this old weight back up here. If I can, it's trying to get further and further away from me, the more I pull it. Normally, this would be our four ounce uh, flat no roll sinker. Then you got your bead. Then you got your swivel. You got your heavier leader line. And then you got your snail hook. And that's your Carolina rig. Now I got to do that two more times before I can go fishing again. So, anyway. I'm gonna have to go find another spot cause this ain't gonna work. I can't sit out here and just feed the Yazoo River all of my tackle and spend all my lunch break out here fixing the lines. That's about all I got for today right now. I got two more I gotta fix up and then I'm gonna head on back to work and see if I can't get something done. But it's James Downs, Downs Family Bullies. And we'll holler at y'all later, y'all have a good one.